Group 2. This is my review of 359 by Gretchen McNeil. I got my ticket for the long way round. Two bottle whiskey for the way. I am so pleased when I get to review a book that I loved. And I really love this book. It was right up my alley. And, you know, I think that the reason I loved it is because it did something that is my favorite thing in books of this genre. And that is to take a small, small piece of an idea that is true in science right now, like a, a concept or a theory, and then build this complete fiction out of it. I love that. I love that because it rings true with me even though it's not. It's complete fiction, but it takes an idea that is based in truth and then it just expands on it. So, Gretchen McNeil, thank you for doing that because you did it extremely, extremely well. This book is about Josie Byrne. Josie Byrne is having a horrible life. Her life just feels like it's falling apart. She's in high school. She's a pretty smart kid in terms of science. Her mother's a theoretical physicist, uh, so she kind of has that thing going on in her family. You know, she gets science, and she, uh, through a series of circumstances, uh, is able to glimpse in a mirror an alternate reality. And she's also dreaming about the person in this alternate reality who is her. So Josie then begins to think that the grass is greener on the other side. You know, maybe in this other girl's life, who's a copy of her in this other universe, oh, it's probably her life is way better because in Josie's dreams, her life does seem better. Her name is Jo. So Josie and Jo swap places, but things are not as they initially seemed. In fact, they are very, very different than what Josie initially thought. And then Jo blocks off the portal and she can't get home. They can't switch back. So Josie's then mission becomes to get home. And that then, of course, becomes the story of the book is how is she going to get home? Could you be any further from home than in an alternate universe? I mean, really? <laughs> so I loved these characters. And here's what I think that Gretchen McNeil did really, really well. And that was she didn't just take a regular story where you have a set of characters and then develop those characters so that they grow from the time that they begin in the story till the ending. She took a set of characters and then she made copies of them in an alternate universe and made them similar with a setting that's identical in essence and yet made them completely distinct, completely well-drawn individual characters that are just copies of each other. I thought that whole idea had such potential to go so wrong, and yet she did it so well. The plot moved along really well. I was never bored. It was pretty much a continual, gosh, how are they going to figure that out? Oh my gosh, now how are they going to solve that? And honestly, how do you get home from an alternate reality? <laughs> It was just full of twists and turns, things I didn't expect. I did not expect for the villain to be the villain. I thought it was somebody completely different. The ending was wonderful. It was one of those endings that it's, uh, it's, it gives you hope and it, you leave satisfied. You know, it's a Patrick Ness kind of an ending, if you know what I mean by that. If you've read any of Patrick Ness's books, you'll know what I mean by that. So. I listened to this book on audio and it was narrated by Tavia Gilbert. I really liked what she did because she, like Gretchen McNeil, was able to take these characters who are copies of each other and make them absolutely distinct. I always knew who was speaking when I was listening. I had no problems with that at all. She is really a great narrator and actually she's, a, she's prolific. I looked her up on audible.com and my gosh, she's narrated all kinds of things. So if you ever run across her name as an audio narrator for a book, have no fear, she'll be fabulous. There were two very small problems I had with this book, but I feel like I wouldn't be reviewing the book fairly if I didn't tell you what those were. First of all, one was in the realm of this fiction, these kids were geniuses. I'm not sure what kid in high school that I've ever met that knows about uh, the multiverses and brains and string theory and all of that. I mean, I like that kind of stuff because I'm kind of a science nerd and I like the common explanations of that on a layman's level, but these kids, there's no way. Really, there's no way. But it's fiction.
fiction. They can be any way they want. So, okay. I just kind of went with it because it worked within the storyline. It worked in the plot. So, okay. Now, the only other thing um, was in Gretchen McNeil's writing, I wish that the editors had done a better job of making some things flow. I wish she, as an author, had been able to do this better. I have a problem with the way that the internal and external dialogue worked. The characters would be having a conversation, so an external dialogue was going on, but it was chopped up by, you know, every time one character would say something, then the other character would have this internal dialogue thinking about what the person had said, and then they would respond. So as a result, you got a very choppy dialogue, external dialogue. And I think that that could have been uh, worked out better. I think that would have flowed better if they had just kind of separated that a little bit and yet still kept it within the context of the conversation. So beyond those two very, very minute things, thoroughly enjoyable book. I would call this pretty much straight up sci-fi. It had all the elements of the things I loved and it was fast. The science was kind of fun, a little, you know, complete fiction built on that little germ of truth. And I loved the characters. There was everything about it. I really loved it. So I hope that you'll give it a try. And if you do, please leave me some comments so that um, we can talk about it. Because I love to talk about books that I love. And I really hope that you will enjoy it. So that's it for now from me. And I will see you next time. Thanks for watching. I'm gone. You're going to miss me when I'm gone. You're going to miss me by my walk. You're going to miss me by my talk. Oh, you're going to miss me when I'm gone.